Hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. In this video, uh, we are still in Belize, Mesoamerica, carrying on with our with the history of Mesoamerica and Native Americans in that region. Basically, the Mayan of Belize, Lower Mexico, Guatemala, and Honduras. In this video, there are more juice to the story, not just short stories that have been translated, but giving you a bit more of what is going on at that time. The story is in Cerros, which is northern Belize, and the story of Cobb Chan. Before we go on further, I'd like to thank all my subscribers, friends and family, for joining me here today. And if you see me for the first time, please like and subscribe if you wish to know more history of Central America and the Caribbean. This story is rather graphic in the de depiction of human sacrifices and of so forth. So if you have a squeamish nature or if you have uh, children who are underage, then please be advised yeah, that the story that I'm going to tell is rather graphic. It is about human sacrifices in the main culture. So, let's go on. Cobb Chan was sore and tired. His head hurt and he had a bump the size of a turkey egg blurring his right eye. His hands were tied behind his back. His fingers were going numb. It was the month of Pax, May. He had travelled from far inland past Lake Axa, across the Mopan River to the town of Beltok on Marco River. Here he had proceeded downriver past, past Yunantanik, guarding the road to the coastal sea, until reaching Zakzu, which was just a few hours of canoe travel further than Petanzu. From Zakzu and nearby Chantomi across the river on the north side near Belmapan today. He had taken the trail to the town of Boxilak and then across the Can Camilla River, Labouring Creek today, until once again had found passage in a canoe going north down the Zulomikob River, New River. He had been treated well by some distant relative in Kalmolz, with the last surname as his, Chan, and told that there were more Chans living further north in La Mania, with whom he could stay. There had been warnings from these distant cousins of his in Kalmolz, where he had spent the night. War was Going on further north, among the towns of Chinam, Utibal, and Chamalkan, on the lagoon and coastal area of the big bay, Chetamal Bay today, he hoped he could avoid any pitch battles or involvement. His luck ran out about four hours paddling beyond the town of Holpatin, which had been about eight hours of paddling north of La Mani. He and his companions from La Mani had been set upon by a war party from Chalacan, which was situated on the north and overland on another lagoon to the east. Pregoso Lagoon, today, he had woken up with his hand tied behind his back and a big headache. From the battle, he had been marched to the end of the river along the coast of the bay, Chetamon Bay, to the site of some sort of temple complex called Chiros. There were a lot of dugouts pulled up along the shore when he had arrived, with hundreds of people standing around. As a prisoner and a slave, he knew what his fate would be. The Haup of Siros and the Narcom, a 
along with their ceremonial attendants, had taken the prisoners, one by one, up the temple steps to be sacrificed to the gods. It was the year 187 BC, by our Roman calendar in Syros, in the shores of the Chatham Bay and the head of New River. It had been 2,927 years since the start of the Mayan calendar, and that started in 3,114 BC. On the far side of the world, in the Mediterranean Sea, the Greeks had started to form their civilization, were just 589 years earlier, in 776 BC, while Romulus would form the first village he called Rome just 110 years later than the Greeks. The Indian Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, had already been written and passed down for the last 4,191 years. The man history books of record was now 3,200 years old. Of those that we know of, that Haruba Siros did not know this, of course, he got the idea of becoming a king and building a temple on a trading trip he had made across the central valley of Mexico. The gods demanded blood and the prisoners would provide a super suitable sacrifice. It was the year of Khan and the suitable god was Hobnil who ruled the south so the wise men of the council had ordered that the clay idols be made of the god Kanyuyab Yeyab and be placed at the piles of stone marking this entrance to the central plaza on the south side. Clay statues were then made of the god Olon Zakab, which was placed in front of the king's house by the central plaza. The council of wise men and other sub-leaders ordered the village from all around to clean the roads and pathways and prepare arches of cohoon plants and bay leaves. The nobles went to the first statue at the south, and there they gathered in a devout ritual. The statue was covered in smoke from the corporal incense, 49 grains of best maize. This ground maize was a holy gift called Saka. The guinea hen had his head cut off and was presented as an offering to the god. From here, the statue was raised on a wooden platform carried on the shoulders of a man called Kante with, with a calabash of water along with more clay statues painted in different bright colors. The statues were not gods, of course, just a representation like Catholics and Christians do today with crosses and idols. A drink was passed along, a drink was passed around to all the nobles of the community, made of 415 kernels of maize. This drink was called Pikala Kakla, and everybody of importance took a ritual drink. Here, more offerings of food and drink were made to the two gods now present. Strangers and visitors were also made presents of food and drink at this time. The Narcon received the leg of deer meat. Further offerings were made during the ceremony to the god by cutting their ears or other parts and offering their own blood to smear the faces of the statue. A ritual paste of calabash seeds and moldy bread was offered to the gods. Incense braziers were used to cover the statues with sweet smelling smoke. These rituals were to prevent bad luck in the coming year. Once the days of the ceremony were over, they believed that evil spirits were driven out and the coming year of Khan and the Bakan Hobnul would be a good one. The Harub of Seros had then commanded that another statue be made of the god Itzamal Kali and placed at the top of the steps in the temple. Up there, the nobles burned three balls of resin called Kirk rubber and proceeded to sacrifice the prisoners. This was done 
by throwing a man quickly on the on the stone altar, holding a man or woman and legs played open by the attendants. The narcon then used a heavy stone dagger to break and spread the bones of the rib cage just below the nipple, where he could reach in and pull out the beating heart. This was then carried around the temple and the blood was smeared on the stone faces of the gods. Food and drink were then offered as gift to the gods and the people in the plaza below. Now, this is the end of the story here. We're going to talk about Cyrus or this time a little bit more in the next video. Now, I do hope you enjoy that story. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about this kingdom in northern Belize. And I hope you will join me. And if you like what you hear, if you just see me for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. And I will see you anon as we carry on with our story of Belize and Mesoamerica.